Hi, now in this short tutorial I want to introduce you to some basic differentiation which is one aspect of calculus and show you one important application. You'll also find that I zoom in at times just in case you're viewing this on a mobile device as there's quite a lot of info that I want to display on the one screen. Okay, so let's get started. Now suppose I have a graph. This is just say part of a graph of y equals some function of x. And I'm assuming that you're familiar with tangents drawn to a curve. Here I've drawn a tangent at this point x on the curve. And its steepness is positive. If I were to draw the tangent say on this part of the curve it would have been going downwards and its gradient would have been negative. So that gradient is continually changing as we move around the curve. And we can measure that gradient on a curve by something called dy by dx. It's a formula, a method that I'll show you in a moment. It gives us a measure of the rate of change, often called the gradient function. It gives the gradient of the tangent at any point x on the curve y equals some function of x. I mean, we might have, say, a function of x something like this. Okay, 2x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x plus 1. And if we were to expand this in the usual way, let's say we expand these last two brackets, we would end up with this. And if I now multiply through by the 2x and the minus 1, tidy up, I'll end up with 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 3x plus 2. And if I were to plot this graph, it would look like this. You can see I've plotted it with axes going from minus 2 to 3, but we can see just this part of the curve. And you can see that the gradient is changing all the time. It's positive up here. At this peak here, it has no gradient. And then down here, it's a negative gradient. At the bottom here, it has zero gradient. And then it's a positive gradient up through here. Now when we get equations of curves which have terms like the ones that you see here, we say that those terms are of the form ax to the power n. So if you have terms of that form in an equation, the gradient is given by this formula, dy by dx, which is equal to a times the power n times x to that power reduced by 1, n minus 1. So when it comes to differentiating this equation here, we would write that dy by dx would equal, taking the first term here, it has the form ax to the power n, we do 3 times the 2, which is 6, and we reduce the power by 1. So 3 take away 1 is 2, so we end up with 6x squared. Similarly, when we get this term here, minus 3x squared, we do 2 times the minus 3, which is minus 6, and we reduce the power by 1. So 2 take away 1 is 1, so we end up with x to the power 1. Mind you, it's a bit pointless writing x to the power 1. I'm just going to leave it as x. Now when it comes to differentiating minus 3x, we can still apply this formula because if I have, say, y equals minus 3x, then I can think of this as equaling minus 3x to the power 1. And so therefore, dy by dx for this term would be 1 times the minus 3, which is minus 3, reduce the power by 1. So 1 take away 1 gives us 0. Now we should know that x to the power 0, anything to the power 0 for that matter, is 1. So you end up with minus 3 times 1, which is clearly minus 3. Now it wouldn't matter if I had, say, y equals 4x, say. I would still do the exact same thing. I would think of this as equaling 4x to the power 1. Differentiate that with respect to x. 1 times 4 is 4. Reduce the power by 1 and you end up with x to the power 0. Anything to the power 0 is 1, so you just end up with 4. 
So we've got this general rule here, and that is that if you have y equals a constant times x, a times x in other words, dy by dx equals that constant a. So when it comes to differentiating minus 3x, it's just going to be simply minus 3. So this is a rule that is based on this rule here, but you would, should really commit it to memory. Now, next term is a constant. And when we have constants, again, we can still apply this rule because let's say we've got the constant y equals 2 then. We can think of this as 2 times 1. And we know that 1 is exactly the same as x to the power 0. So when it comes to dy by dx, dy by dx is going to be 2 times 0. Well, that's 0. Reduce the power by 1, that's x to the power minus 1. But 0 times anything is still 0. So we could apply this to any constant, this rule. And we get that if you have a constant as a term, dy by dx is 0. So I can just forget about the 2 now. And so this gives me the gradient function. And by substituting various values of x into here, I can find out how steep this curve is, or the rate of change of y with respect to x at any point x. And I've got a table of values here. I've got values of x going from minus 1 to 3. And I've substituted these values of x into the equation for dy by dx. You can check them out, but you can see that when x is negative 1, I get a positive gradient of 9. And that's very steep. For every one unit across, we can imagine going 9 units up if I had a tangent drawn there. At the point where x is 0, that's this point on the curve here, you can see I've got negative 3 as the gradient. That means it's going downwards. And if I drew a tangent at this point, the steepness of that tangent would be negative 3. In other words, for every one unit across, I would go down 3 units. We'll be looking at the gradient in detail in other tutorials. But for now, I just want you to appreciate that dy by dx is giving us the gradient of the tangent at any point x on the curve. And one special thing I want to draw your attention to is what we call stationary points. These are points on the graph where the gradient is zero. And these are of special interest to us in questions. The gradient is zero at peaks and troughs like this in this graph. And these points can be of special interest to us. For example, suppose we had an open cuboid with these dimensions, x, x, and y, and it had a fixed surface area of 54 centimeters squares. Then the volume of the box can be shown to be equal to this equation here. Now, if we were to draw a graph of that equation, it would look something like this. We'd be only interested in positive values of x because it represents a length. And if we're looking for the maximum volume, it'd be at this point around here. And we can find that very easily by setting dv by dx equal to zero. The gradient here of the tangent would be zero. So if you were to differentiate v with respect to x by following the rules that I've shown you, it turns out to be 18 minus 2x squared. And if we set this equal to zero, we find that x equals 3. So the maximum volume occurs when x is 3 and it turns out to be 36 centimeter cubes. So hope you can see that it does have an application, this differentiation. This is just one of many applications. Now if I go back to our earlier graph, when that gradient is 0, dy by dx is 0, I end up with that quadratic equation equaling 0. And to solve this, if I was to use the quadratic formula, what we find is that the values of x are minus 0.37 and 1.37 to two decimal places. And those stationary points would be at these points here, where that gradient is 0. 
You can't read it that accurately from the graph, but this x coordinate here is the minus 0 0.37, and this x coordinate here is the 1.37. Now, what I want to show you next is that you might have an equation that looks something like this, far more complicated than what we had here. And yet, we can reduce this equation down to terms of the form ax to the power n. So, I'd like to run through this one with you. Let's just section that off. Now, you've got to be familiar with indices, first of all, so I'm assuming that you are, because when it comes to 2 thirds times the square root of x, we can think of this as 2 thirds x to the power a half. So already this term is in the form ax to the power n. Now when it comes to a division like this, then what we need to do is think of this as minus, and then the 3 can be thought of as a third when it's in the divisor here. And in place of the x squared being in the denominator, if we take this as 1 over x squared, then that becomes x to the power minus 2. You should be familiar with negative powers. If not, do go back and check my earlier tutorials on indices on that. And so that is all multiplied with the 4x minus 1. And so what I'd want to do next is to expand that bracket. And so if we multiply the minus third x to the power minus 2 with 4x, we're going to get minus 4 thirds. And then we would add the powers, minus 2 to the 1 there. That's going to give me x to the power minus 1. And then minus the third x to the minus 2 times the negative 1 there is going to give me plus 1 third x to the power minus 2. So I've got each of these terms here in the form ax to the power n. So I can differentiate them in the normal way. So dy by dx would equal, and for this one we'll do half times 2 thirds, which will be 1 third. And then we reduce the power on x by 1, so we get x to the power minus a half. Going to this second term here, minus 4 thirds times the minus 1 will be plus 4 thirds. And then reduce the power by 1, and we end up with x to the power minus 2. And for the last term here, minus 2 times a third is going to be minus 2 thirds. Reduce the power by 1, and you get x to the power minus 3. OK? And it might be a good idea just to tidy this up. 1 third x to the minus a half is the same as 1 over 3x to the power half. OK? 4 thirds x to the power minus 2 is the same as 4 over 3x to the squared. And lastly, minus 2 thirds x to the power minus 3 is the same as 2 over 3x cubed. So by putting various values of x into here, we could work out what the gradient at any point x is on this curve. Now if you did draw this curve, it would look something like this. And you can see again the gradient changing. And if I wanted to locate this stationary point at this point here on the curve, let's just mark it in. There it is there. What I'd need to do is set dy by dx equal to zero and solve this equation when it equals zero. Now, I'm not going to show you how to do that, but if you did do that, you'd find that x turns out to be 0 0.46. And this is a very important point then when it comes to working out the gradient on curves, a stationary point. So what I've given you here then is a very quick brief introduction then into differential calculus, where I've shown you how to differentiate terms that have this form. It gets more advanced than this, You'll have to look at my other tutorials to be able to see how we differentiate, for instance, trigonometric functions, exponential functions, logarithmic functions, with all their various rules. But I hope this has given you, as I say, some quick insight into this. So if you found this useful, please like the video in the description. And hopefully you'll consider subscribing by 
double clicking on the subscribe button so that you'll be notified of all upcoming videos. So thanks for watching. Hopefully see you again.